We're gonna start off our background using our really big flat brush. So the biggest brush that you have in your toolkit, which is this guy right here. We're gonna use this to fill in our entire background first, color block that in in a nice gradient. And then we're gonna hop back into our coral, fill out those corals whenever we have a moment to dry, and then we'll jump into our sea turtle and color block him as well further in the lesson. But the first thing we have to develop is our water and creating our highlights in that water. So you're gonna start by putting in just pure white at the very, very top, just like this. And it's okay if you go over your turtle, guys. Turtle was really just there for you to get an idea of where you want your final piece to go. And of course, you can really methodically go around them. But keep in mind that for, in order to get the flow just right and that gradient going down our entire painting perfect, we really do need to have a nice continuous motion and stroke. Use your whole arm. Don't get too focused on the little ee, ee, tiny motions because you won't get the flow that you're looking for. So as soon as you get in that layer of white, we're gonna grab some of our teal color and we're gonna start layering that in as well. So you see, I'm just doing a quick little bloop, 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 putting in some stuff here and there, going around a little bit with our turtle face. We don't wanna cover them up completely, but you get, will have to go into your turtle a little bit in order to get the effect that we're looking for. And you're just gonna slowly, with almost like a fisheye effect, see how we're kind of curving our, uh, our gradient here to create that circular kind of motion. You're gonna leave just a tiny bit of white at the very top. And then while everything's still wet, I mean, don't even have to clean your brush, you just grab some of your turquoise, that really dark turquoise is very rich, beautifully saturated turquoise color and start mixing that in as well. And you see this big old flat brush handles this really well. It's very smooth, very good at getting in this pigment. And of course, if you need just a little bit of water, feel free, just dab the very, very end of your brush in some water and then start adding in that color. And now keep in mind, we're actually going to be bringing up this darker turquoise color up the corners on the edges, just like this. And this is going to create just a little bit of a focal effect. So we're going to be focusing the eye even more intensely on the bright highlight right there by pulling in our shadows on the edge. You're gonna go in with your phthalo blue next, and that's that really deep, really beautiful blue color. And you're gonna put that just below where you put the turquoise. And you're gonna work, your, work it up into the gradient. And now, just as an example, if you've had some of your paint dry between your layers, it's a-okay. All you gotta do is go back in with the previous color that was in the layer above it, like this turquoise color, and just re-feather it into the background a bit more. And you might notice that you see some of these uh, little kind of like spots showing up where it's kind of going through but not blending in neatly with the prior color. That's when you just gotta, again, go up the gradient, go get some of that teal color, and then just very gently and lightly add that color in. And now you don't have to worry too much about making this gradient, gradient perfectly smooth by any means because we're gonna be going over it with some texture and layers in just a moment. But again, I'm just going to put one more layer of that 
phthalo blue in here. And then I'm gonna add some white to my brush, not even really cleaning it. And then this is going to be the base back color for our sand at the bottom of the ocean. And it's just that white and blue mixed together. And of course, you're gonna wanna add in some of that dark blue as well right through there, just so it stays nice and evenly toned throughout the entire canvas. Excellent, guys. And next, we're gonna go ahead and outline all of our coral outcropping. And we're going to switch over to a different brush now. We're gonna switch over to our smaller flat brush, just like this guy right here. And what we're gonna use is our Prussian blue. It's like a dark navy Prussian, which you can also make your own version of this using a phthalo blue and a purple or a dark black, anything like that. And I'm literally just refilling in where we sketched in those little rocky outcroppings earlier. But we're gonna add a little bit more dimension to them. And it's pretty simple. There's nothing too crazy to think about when it comes to this. We're literally just kind of boxing off circular and square little patterns here. And this is really just going to help you develop form and give yourself a base whenever you jump into doing the color blocking and more of the details in the coral. Just like that. And don't forget, we had some over here as well. Just like that. And you can use this effect that we're doing right now for all of this um, form that we're creating in the coral and stuff for in many different formats. So you can use this for developing trees, um, rocks, obviously. Um, and in general, it just is a great way to kind of conceptualize the way you think about developing forms that you know aren't necessarily perfect, like we're trying to develop an exact form like with a turtle, kind of more abstract forms that still build up depth. And now while our background is still a little wet and or a little tacky back there, we're gonna take our phthalo blue colors, that dark blue, that we were just using a second ago in the background. And we're gonna go through and add in our rocky outcropping that's in the distance. And so we're just gonna do it first with some little squiggles, a little line, and you see how I'm kind of feathering, which feathering is just the act of pulling a pigment around a little bit into another pigment, just like that. So you see I'm kind of doing these like little gestural marks developing some texture in the background, but we're not trying to make it super defined because it's further away. And whenever you're underwater and something's far, farther away, you don't usually see very much detail. It's almost like very atmospheric. It kind of is there, but also kind of not. It's disappearing in some ways. And so this is what we're doing. And now I'm going over it with a little bit of teal, so just our plain teal color. And it's because everything is still wet that it's gonna blend in very nicely. So we're just creating that little bit of atmospheric feel and touch in the background. And we're even gonna add the, a little bit of a rocky outcropping a bit closer. Right here, it's overlapping our background, though you might not be able to quite tell yet. You'll be able to tell in a little bit when we do more details. And again, I'm just using that phthalo blue and I'm just kind of fading or feathering out the color into this still tacky kind of wet color that we just put in a moment ago. Just like that. Kind of wanted to add just a little bit more height on that side. Excellent. So now we're going to take a quick break and then whenever we come back, we're going to do our water, get all those ripples in and get our highlights in. And then we're going to also color block in our corals. And then we'll go on to the next part of the lesson which is with our sea turtle.